We're going to talk about a little bit with uh, our guest today, Sabine, who is currently living in Germany. And it's one of my favorite countries, and I'm here in the United States, but I love the German music, and my wife is German, and all that good stuff. So I'm very excited to have Sabine on the show. Sabine, why don't you give us your full name and tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, okay. Well, hello, everyone. I'm very honored to be here. And um, my name is Sabine van Baren. I'm Dutch. I'm, uh, I moved to Germany when I was 23. In fact, I moved to Germany because of music. Music brought me into that country. And uh, yes, uh, I'm a singer and I'm a sound healer and I write songs and I've been on stage all my life. So this is, um, this is what I'm here for, bringing music into people's hearts. And uh, yes, over, I've support, overcome a lot of stuff to do this and coming from a musical family. And uh, yeah, I still live in Germany and I've never been in the States, which is totally unbelievable. I don't believe that I've never been there. It's like, well, oops. Let me be the first to invite you. Yes. <laughs> and let me remind the audience that you are listening to the Ernie Meyer show. Yes. And if you like what you hear and want to connect with her later on in the program, she will offer you a free offering of how to get going with what she has. And as well as I give a free offering as I progress throughout this uh, Ernie Meyer show. And uh, I want to let you know that I'm happy to have Sabine on this program because I love music as well, especially German music. And this isn't her style, but for myself, I love the, the Flippers and Andy Borg, Bruner and Bruner. So I'm a big fan back here in the United States of a lot of the German music, but I'd like to hear more about Sabine's music. So please tell us more about yourself and maybe some obstacles that you had to get you to where you are today. Okay. Well, first of all, I never wanted to be a singer. This was already story number one. I wanted to be a dancer, but um, life led me to this funny situation where my sister, who is a singer as well, who lives in Germany, gave me a call for a concert where she um, had a big audience and somebody was ill and couldn't do the choir. So she said, um, I really need a backing vocal. Could you please come? And at that time I was living in Belgium. She called me two days before the concert and didn't hear the music, nothing. And I just said, yes, I don't know why, but something in me said, sure, I come. So here I go, taking my clothes and everything, go into the train, go to Germany come into this huge hall, rehearse a little bit with her, some rock tracks, and uh, found out there were eight, 800 people waiting for us. So me, I was never on stage before. I was as a kid already recording with my father because he was a producer. So I stood already in, in studios and I sang as a little girl with famous Dutch singers, but it's not in front of an audience, you know, so it's different. So here, first obstacle, uh, I was standing there and the whole day I didn't have a voice. It was as if it was all gone. And when I got on stage, it sounds ridiculous, but I was standing with my back to the audience, you know, and I would turn around when I was singing and then I would turn around again. I wouldn't want to look, I was so scared. And funny enough, they still loved me and they said, hey, great, why don't you join the band? So this was for me. I said, okay, why not? So I decided to join the band and then I decided to come to Germany finally after half a year going back and forth, you know. So here I was in this huge country and uh, life brought me to a famous uh, producer lady with whom I finally started to live in, a, you know, with different people in the house. And she offered me jobs and really diving into the musical business and I was touring with several people. And then I started to do work on stage myself as a singer and uh, I sang in all different styles also the style you describe and um, yeah many famous people as well and I really had a good good phase you know I was really playing on huge stages talking about 200,000 people outside on the open air or huge 
But there was something in me which was so strange. I always had the feeling that I was standing next to me, looking at me being, oh, am I okay? Can I handle this? Am I good enough? You know, and this was so silly because I know I have that talent and I know I'm okay. I don't look, you know, I'm okay. So it was like, what is this pain? Why can't I just be there and say, hey, here I am. I love to do this. I was always judging myself and controlling. And so at a certain point, I said, I don't want to do this anymore because I can't deal with my talent. I can't deal feeling free with this beautiful talent I have. So I said, I'm going to stop. And then a, this beautiful friend where I used to live with in Germany, she offered me a, a session, which is might sound a bit weird for those who don't know, with an American lady who was like sort of receiving, you know, transmissions from another realm, I would say. So I called this lady and I said, look, I have this problem. I don't know how to deal with it. I'm going to stop. And funny enough, what happened with her first, she's very famous, by the way, she's her name is Sheila and she channels Theo, which is quite a famous. Um, um, well, anyway, you can check it on the Internet and she changed her voice, you know, and she started to sound what was going on and she said to me um, in this voice you have to continue you will find out one day I think she touched something in me in my heart because I decided to continue I said okay she never said what is what I was going to do but she just said go on you know so then um, I went on and I got my studio jobs and I remember I was in a studio job, which was really terrible. I hated it, but I was there with a very good friend and we were having fun on a song from Stevie Wonder, which is Superstition, I guess everybody knows. And my my colleague with whom I was working there, he's a great percussion player. He's very, very good guy. And he was singing a groove, you know, like do, do, da, do, do, something like that. And I started to sing very superstitious. And we looked at each other and we said, this is so fun. Why don't we record it? So next day we went to his house. We recorded another version of the song and we grabbed four other musicians, singers on top, and we created an acapella group. So here we are on stage recording two CDs, going to Taiwan, playing, singing on all the famous jazz festivals and everything. And every time when I was going to go on stage, what I do, I went to the toilet, I looked up in my mirror and I said, you're going to be great and you're going to do what the audience loves and what they need to hear from you. And I was sort of preparing myself mentally and I was always praying. I also said, okay, give me the support I need to feel good on stage and to transmit what what is good for the audience? What what they want to hear? You know, why am I here? What is I'm going to give? So I went with a total different vibe on that stage, and this is where something happened. You know, like something happened in my voice and in my the way I was singing and the way I was doing that. People would come to me and say, "I don't know what you have, but when you sing, something goes different in me." You know, like pain would go or other topics would change and. I got a lot of feedback on that, like as if my voice and whatever I was doing with this praying and this preparing as if I was transmitting something on top of the music. So this for me was already very special. And since I was in Germany, I came there when I was 23, I was totally hooked on spiritual topics. I loved to find out what is it, this connection between you and me and what is it we are Besides what we see, you know, there's so much more and what's happening when we're not there anymore, like we spoke about it. So I read all books like Shirley MacLaine, uh, Deepak Chopra, many, many people, and I loved it. And I started to do meditations and I started to do a lot of workshops and to try to find out how can you uplift? What, what is it you can do to, to activate your sixth sense, right? Which is part of us, but we are under, under feet with that you know it's not it's not in our culture to learn that but i did so i was already in the middle of that and then came these people who spoke about the singing and then i saw you know what i'm gonna do a, i'm really going diving in that and see what happens if i learn that if i really learn to open up 
to a space to whatever you want to call it call it god or overconscious or that which unites us all i don't really know the field the divine field and i i went to a russian guy who teached me and i started to work with my hands and i said um, i did that like a few years i started to support people with laying on hands to particular and i still was singing you know i was still doing stage work and i was writing songs and everything and then at one point i thought this is so strange i'm a singer if you know it's already a miracle imagining something comes out of this hand and it works you know this is like this is incredible but it does work so why don't i do it with my voice why don't i try to connect that which i transmit with my hands through my voice and i decided to go and research in that area and uh, finally i did find a way to open up to that and it was like for me the moment where this vibe was coming out this this i would call it I call it light language because it's such a beautiful, special language. I was totally moved and I had the feeling I come home. It's my home. And I felt so happy with that, that I said, this is a part that I want to bring into the world. And this is a lot what I'm doing. So supporting people with that, like, you know, I would just start to, to give and transmit sang information in this beautiful language that i don't understand and that i can't speak it just comes it's like a transmission mm. and uh, yeah this is so besides my singing besides my songs and my concerts and everything this is a big part of my life that i'm doing now over 20 years in germany and uh, especially lately via internet because of the situation but mm. yeah to support people and to give them strength and yeah, to help them out of their, oh, I can't, how should I, and everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, limited beliefs can be very sabotaging to the person. And Absolutely. I see that all around me, and, you know, you try to get away from situations like that, but it's with 95% of the people, or more, and you know, part of what I do is help people overcome those limited beliefs and fears and things of that sort. And it sounds like you did the same thing from a different angle, which is great because, you know, if, if I can't help them, if a Gary Barnes can't help them, if somebody else can't help them, maybe you can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the, the main thing there, audience, is the fact that you can actually overcome your limited beliefs to become more of what you are. And I'm a big follower of a person such as Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. I love his vision. Mm -hmm. And he will sacrifice everything. He sacrificed his fortune to create the businesses that he did. And he does this to better humanity, whether he is or not, he's doing it with that in mind. So he has no limited beliefs where he, after he cleared 180 million American from selling PayPal, he took all that money and invested in this rocket ship idea that he had called SpaceX. And he actually developed a unique way of building a, a rocket ship and he actually now works the government supplying it, but he almost went broke doing that. How many wow. people would do that? If, if you yeah. make a hundred million or more dollars or a few million dollars, you, you'd be on a beach in the Caribbean with an umbrella drink in your hand. Sad. Not him. Yeah. He risked wow. everything. So wow. you know, he has no limited beliefs. If you want to really get out there, listen to what Sabine says. You can overcome your limited beliefs to help people in the world, to share what you have in the world. I do such a thing. In fact, on Monday, October 11, 2021, I'm going to be doing daily talk shows called Table Talks about giving away free information about business and how to overcome fears, how to overcome different obstacles in your life and how to go about it. My way not be a the best way, but it's the way that I came from, from where I came from. 
So Sabine will tell you her information for where she came from. And she has done that as already, but you know, if you connect better with her, we're gonna have her information down below where you can connect with her and actually do some certain things. I don't wanna give it all away. Sabine, what, tell them about what you're gonna offer them. Well, I mean, I think it's already great if we just can talk together and you tell me what's your main topic you're dealing with right now. And then since I'm very sensitive and empathic, maybe I receive an information or maybe I can guide you through something that comes to mind, or maybe I can sing a little bit if you're open to that, something you've never experienced before to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to try this. And it can support you on many levels, or maybe I can give you some prayers or some insights that I have that will support you for you on your path. Because my goal is that we really raise this frequency on this planet. I mean, we're all beautiful souls and we have to remember that. We're all special, we're all precious, and we all have something unique to give. And we have to work on that to be, you know, to love yourself and to love what you're doing. And so I think it's so beautiful to try to remember that and to become more unified and together to come in that space, you know. That's great. So you're offering a free consultation to people. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you can take it from there. Remember, if you like what you see here, please like this video, share it, and please subscribe to this channel. Because we have many interviews on here and many different people. We have rock stars, we have TV personalities, we have everyday people that are coming on and we're allowing our, the, the, the 15, 20 minutes of fame of being on our show, the Ernie Meyer Show. In fact, if you are in business or have overcome obstacles to do things in your life, my free offer with you is to be on this show and I will put the uh, link to the calendar to book a, an interview on my show and we can do the same thing again. So you can make a living or you can design a life. Anything in, in, uh, you want to say to the audience before we go, Sabine? Anything I would like to say? Well, mm -hmm. I would like to invite you to focus more on love than fear, especially in this time. Don't watch too much that has been told everywhere. Focus on go into nature, walk again bare feet in the sand and the water, breathe healthy air and try to you know be in contact with nature because we're so much in all these devices and phones and things and i need this and i need that and i need to buy and stop buying buy something precious that is really important to you and then go in nature and try to rejuvenate yourself so you're more in tune with what you truly are this is what i do and i can just tell you it's such a benefit well thank you Sabine. and of course, you're going to get a copy of this, so you, you'll be able to put it on your social media again. So if anybody in Germany is watching this, uh, I could say V Gates. And yeah. <laughs> I know some of the words. My wife is uh, German, and uh, she's taught me some not so nice words that I won't say here, but some good <laughs> words. Anyhow. Uh, what about Ich liebe dich? Oh, she's oh. Yeah, I love that. You know, she calls me Shotzi and you know. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. So um, my favorite group, if you're listening out there, my favorite group, even from America, is the Flippers. Mm -hmm. Oh, with Andy Borg, Borg Reimer, Borg and Borg, uh, Bruner and Bruner, you name it. I love them all, and I was introduced by the uh, my father-in-law and my current wife to your kind of music, and I just love it. In fact, I was telling Sabine before we got started, if I knew the Flippers were having their last concert in April of 2011, I would have sold everything just to go. And... I, I watch them, I listen to you all the time. So I just wanna say thank you for your music. And Sabine, thank you for your music. You're and welcome. I think ABBA has that in one of their songs. Thank you for the music. 
Yeah, genau. Yeah. <laughs> so by the way. I'm a big music fanatic. I am. That's great. That's I, I, great. I just love music. I play the drones and I sing and what have you. Oh, so, really? Who knows? Great. Maybe we'll sing together on stage one of these days. <laughs> yes, why not? Well, great. I mean, I'm I'm open to everything, you know. Music is one of the main important things anyway, because it goes so deep and it's so supportive and so fun and so beautiful. Yes, it yeah. is. So really I have good. a lot to listen, by the way, yeah? if people want to hear what I'm doing, I have a oh, YouTube yes. channel, they can listen to a lot of tracks, you know, I have a SoundCloud channel, and I'm happy if you want to take a listen, there's many different things on it, songs, uh, improvisations, and whatever, so have fun, go through it and give me your like, and uh, looking forward to meet you, oh, to talk about great. it. Thank you very much, remember. From the Ernie Meyer Show to you, we thank you for watching. We thank you for listening. We just thank you. And yes. if you do appreciate what you hear on this or any of our other interviews, please like, share, and especially subscribe to us so that you don't miss anything. And especially subscribe because I'm starting a new show on Monday and I will keep doing the interviews as well. So remember, Get over your limited fears. You can make a living or you can design your life. Bye-bye, everybody.